Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and last night Blackmagic released the Beta 4 version of Resolve 16. And while I mean, each one of these betas has been a huge number of changes, and we've really not seen much in the way of new features. Now, with 15, it's like almost every beta, there was a handful of new things stuffed in it, as well as bug fixes. And so far, we've only seen some pretty minor things and mostly bug fi fixes, which is nice. I, I want them to work on the bugs because the product is pretty, pretty solid. There's no question about it. But this time we do have a couple new features and I want to talk to you about them because they're things that, well, most of them are things that I think I'm really going to like and uh, we'll get into them. So the first one, and it's actually something that's kind of bugged me and has bitten me in the butt a couple times, is if you have a clip that is in a, let's say a 30 frames per second timeline and you copy it and then you go to a 24 frames per second timeline and you try and paste it, it'll throw you an error saying that the footage doesn't match uh, the frame rate. Now that has been fixed and we can now copy and paste between timelines with different frame rates. So I think that was a big, uh, it's not a big improvement, but it's something I've actually ran into a number of times. So it's one that I'm pretty happy with. Another new feature is being able to hit the R key and bring up the clip speed. So if we're on this piece of footage here, we'll go to the edit page and I hit R, it's gonna bring up the change clip speed. Now, of course, you can modify this with the custom keyboard parameters and change it to whatever you want, but by default, it's the R key. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, just a new, yet another shortcut being added. Uh, it never hurts to have a bunch of shortcuts. Change clip speed is one that I use on a regular basis. Uh, usually it's just to um, reverse the, the, the footage, you know, from play it backwards. I can do it in here by saying reverse speed. Uh, if I'm going to change the actual speed of it, I'm usually doing that with the other tools, but uh, now it's just a shortcut. So that's cool. Uh, another one is the A key for auto color. Uh, this isn't something that I use, and but let's, let's take a quick look. I'm going to take the same footage here and I'll go to my color page. I'm going to reset the node on here and I'll just hit A and boom, auto color. So for some people, that's going to be good enough. And why not? You know, if it works, it works. And the auto color algorithm that they've used has improved over the last couple of years. So it may be something that if you're in a hurry, you just want to knock something out. Maybe you are doing videos on YouTube that are telling people about new features and you're in a hurry. Maybe it could be something good. I don't know. We'll have to see um, just how well it works, but I'll play around with it. And uh, again, adding more shortcuts, never a bad thing. Now the next one and something I have been using in beta 16 is the automatic upload to YouTube. And for me, I, you know, I have a full-time job. I'm busy during the day. I knock these videos out in the evening, sometimes very late in the evening. And in the past I would have to render it and either wait for it or render something. If I'm working on a big project, render it overnight and then have to deal with it in the morning. But what I like is I can do a video like this and tell it to automatically upload to YouTube when it's done rendering. And then I go to bed. I wake up in the morning, it's sitting in YouTube, it's got all the information in it. I just have to tweak a couple things and it's ready to post. So I like that. But let's take a look at what they changed in the actual program here. So if I go to the deliver page and I go to the YouTube settings. so. Uh, I have, of course, resolution format codec, uh, the audio codec, uh, data burn-in, so I can add the data burn-in if I'm using that. I um, have to click to make sure I upload directly to YouTube. I can put in the description, the visibility, private, public, or unlisted, and the category. So that one's also a new one. So some more information that you can uh, have it stuff into YouTube when you upload. Now, I'll, they do have Vimeo and Frame.io, but this change was specific to the YouTube settings. So that's some pretty cool features. Um, again, not a lot of like, wow, cool stuff, but 
some interesting stuff. Now, other things, I'm just going to turn over here and read off this list of some other things. Uh, supporting a moving playhead option in the cut page. I haven't been using the cut page yet. I had a, a workflow that's worked for me, and I have some bigger projects coming up that I'll probably end up using the cut page on just to get more familiar with it. So, uh, again, um, that was something I saw asked quite a bit, and we'll see how that works. On Fairlight, they've added uh, the ability to add crossfades to clips, which I would have always thought was in there, but uh, I guess it wasn't. Support for applying presets to Fairlight buses for equalizer, dynamics, plugins, channel setup. Um, I don't do much with Fairlight, so um, this isn't going to affect me a whole lot. Support for Fairlight PCIe audio accelerator drivers on Mac OS. Support for tagging the video monitoring signal with Rec 2020 color space information based on the output color space. Um, again, something uh, for higher end color colors and stuff, but not for me. Uh, let's see, support for toggling between rectified and non-rectified ray forms for audio clips and media storage and media pool. I'm not even sure I know what that means, so I'm not going to worry about that one too much. Improved stabilization behavior for clips with rotation specified in clip attributes. Uh, yeah, I've always thought the if you added stabilization on footage that you had rotated to maybe straighten out the horizon... It always didn't do a good job, and so apparently that's been improved. And not something I've used often or I've needed often, uh, maybe once or twice in the last year or two. But, uh, you know, if you're running into that and you have to rotate it, you can now know that the stabilization is going to be better than it was before. Improved timeline render caching behavior to include output super scale settings. Well, that's good because super scale was a pig, and... If you used super scale, even though it would render it, it would just when you go to, or pre-render it, you know, then you'd go to output it and it would re-render it again. It would just take forever. So hopefully that's a nice improvement. I don't use the super scale very often. I've used it a couple times. Don't really need to. I think what the stuff I've done, it's just worked fine. Just working with the regular footage and just scaling it up. Improved AVI support with ability to decode BGRA clips. So if you work with AVIs a lot, that could be cool. And improved handling of edit sizing in new products with edit sizing applied to clips after fusion effects. Um, I didn't have a problem with that, but it's improved, so okay. Aside from that, there are tons of bug fixes. Uh, overall bug fixes, issues in the cut page, the edit page, uh, a lot of stuff on the edit page, a bunch of stuff in Fusion, a bunch of stuff in Color, a bunch of stuff in Fairlight, and some things fixed up in the media and delivery. So if you want the whole list of fixes, you can go to Blackmagic's website and look at the release notes and look at all the bug fixes, see if, you know, if you're reporting anything, if it's in there. But I really just wanted to focus on new features because that's um, you know, bugs are fine and sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's not, sometimes it doesn't affect you, but you want to know what's new. And I think the things that I talked about that are new are, you know, they're, they're worth knowing for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Be sure and like, and subscribe, check that bell icon to get notified whenever we do a new video. As always folks, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.